Well, I'm surprised no one's published how they built their home parts washer on YouTube yet. So here goes. I built my parts washer out of a laundry sink and an old faucet I got on Craigslist. And I cut a hole in my countertop and I didn't want to lose the counter space, so I kept the plug that came out of the countertop and put it in the top of the sink. So I used a five gallon pail, a sink, and a, and a faucet that I got off of uh, Craigslist, and a five gallon bucket that I filled with Heat Cat West Aquis Parts Washer environmentally friendly water based solvent. I connected it to the faucet that I got off of Craigslist and the faucet comes out of the uh, of the receptacle and it's got a serrated end on it so I can connect it to a hose that goes to my equipment, my brushes to wash, wash my parts. Here it is connected to a parts washer brush. Here's the parts washer brush and another high flow rate device laying in the bottom of the sink. And then I hooked it up to a submersible pump. There you turn the pump on and you got your solvent flowing through your hose to your sink. Here's the pump I bought. It's a made in the USA, everything in this is made in the USA, teal pump that will pump to a height of 11 feet. Make sure you get a pump that pumps to a height of 11 feet. Here's the pump with the output spigot on it. It'll pump about a gallon a minute at, 11, at, at, at 7 feet. Here's another view of the pump, just for those interested. Submersible teal made in the USA pump. Now, to build a thing, you're going to need several plumbing parts. And here's a few of, of the plumbing parts. You can see there's a grommet, a 7 8 inch grommet, and some sink fixtures that I picked up at Home Depot. Here's the lid of the bucket with the appropriate holes punched in it. One for the drain coming out of the sink, one for the cord, one for the output pressure tube, and one for a, a parts heater, which I'll explain in a bit. Here's the grommet I used around the electrical cord. Now the plug on the electrical cord has to fit through a fairly big size hole, so what I did was I put it through the drain hole, slid it, ran it over to a smaller hole that the grommet will fit in, and the grommet also has to be split as you saw on the other thing. Uh, the, the cleaning solution is from Heat Cat West. It's a parts washer solution. You mix uh, uh, one half gallon, makes five gallons into a bucket. It also has microbes that eat the oil that you wash off of your parts, keeping your parts solution clean. But the, the caveat to these microbes is they have to be kept fairly warm to keep them alive and keep their efficiency up. So what I did was I bought an aquarium parts heater and submersed it in to the upper part of this five gallon tub. And the five gallon, the, the, the parts heater is good enough for five gallons. It will heat, it will keep the temperature of the tank between 66 and 90 degrees Fahrenheit. You see the 66 looks like a 99. Here's, here's some more information on the parts heater. It's a 25 watt heater that should cost about a dollar a month to run in your tank. Uh, here's the capacity. So 4 to 10 gallons, 25 watts is plenty of capacity. Let's take a closer look at the lid with the holes punched in it. You can see there's a hole for the drain, a hole for the power cord, a hole for the pump output tube, and a hole for the aqueous heater. So the first thing I did was I installed the power cord from the submersible pump. And, and this power cord, the plug will fit through the drain hole, and then you put the grommet around the cord, feed it through the slit, and put it through the cord hole that, that's off to the side. And then you put the ABS PVC drain fitting, which is nothing more than a one and a, a, a half inch drain fitting purchased at Home Depot, to uh, lock down that slit so it won't, won't come apart on you. There's a bottom view of the ABS fitting that I acquired at, at Home Depot, and a bottom view of the cord coming through the through the lid. So the next thing I need to do, and, it, and this aquarium heater is, is made out of glass, so it's somewhat delicate, but you need to stick it through the hole the 7 8 inch grommet uh, and, and on the other end of the, of the lid. And you can push it all the way down so that the majority of this parts heater is submerged in the water and then dial in the temperature that you want to keep uh, the solution at. Here's a bottom view of the lid showing the uh, teal pump and the, the heater and the drain fixture attached. Let's look at the top part of that lid with the output pipe attached to the pump. 
you can see I've got the drain fitting attached, stuck into the drain hole, and the output of the pump coming out the center hole with a mark on it where the pump hits the bottom of the tank. Here's a, here's a closer look at the whole assembly put together. And this is key to making it. I mean, anybody with, with, a, with some kind of mechanical sense can put this thing together very, very easily. So then you put the lid into the tank of solution. Uh, and make sure the pump is at the bottom of the solution. I put a little shelf so the pump stays about a half inch above the bottom so it don't pick up too much dirt on the bottom. There you go. There's your, there's your supply bucket, your drain, your drain that goes into the bucket, your heater, and your output fixture, and the plug that goes to the aquarium heater and the pump motor. Here's a close-up of the aquarium heater. I put a wire tie around it so that uh, it wouldn't fall into the tank, although it's, it fits pretty snug in that 7 8 inch grommet. Here's everything put together, the two cords, the drain fixture, the output tube from, from the pump. So the next thing we want to do is put this pump, uh, this bucket of 5 gallon solution, 5 gallon, five gallon bucket of solution under the sink, connect it to the hose that goes to the fixture on the sink, that's what this does, that's the output of the pump, and then connect the drain pipe from the sink to the bucket. Now, I, I, I got it fairly well airtight to, to prevent evaporation of that solution because that solution isn't cheap. It costs about 100 bucks for five gallons. Uh, now we take the power cords and tie them off to the output tube and plug the pump into a switched outlet and the heater into a fixed outlet, which I had wired underneath my sink properly grounded and switched to protect uh, me from electrocution because a good parts washer with an electrocuted solution isn't any good. I wanted to monitor the level of my parts solution, so I built a, a dipstick out of an old uh, a flag thing that I got on the, on the 4th of July, and there you can see I've got four gallons of solution in, in my bucket based on this dipstick, and I can monitor, I can monitor that using the dipstick. So everything's hooked up, and I've got the output of the pump goes to this uh, serrated uh, bracket, which you can connect your hose to. Uh, you can see that I have a basket to collect uh, to collect big big pieces that I can put into the drain, but you can't do that with the thing in there. So there it is, and I can collect a lot of sludge in this thing and then just dump it out so that it doesn't go into my uh, doesn't go into my main reservoir. I purchased this flow through brush on eBay. Very reasonable price for the brush, very extravagant price for the shipping, but I thought I'd do it anyway. Anyway, this brush seems to work fairly well, cleans parts. I built this for high flow. I can get about a gallon a minute out of this part. I get a half gallon a minute out of the uh, brush. Here's my outlet. I have one switched and one that's on all the time. And the switched outlet goes to a universal outdoor switch under my bench so I can just reach under there and turn the pump on. Uh, the, the, it, it, this is a completely waterproof switch. It, it's sealed, so I, the, the shock hazard is significantly reduced. Uh, uh, you can pick this thing up at Home Depot too. So there is the complete system set up underneath the sink with my excess uh, solution in my half-gallon jug sitting right next to my reservoir bucket. Fire up the pump, and there you go. We get about a half gallon per minute out of this restriction. Get a full gallon per minute with no restriction. Uh, that means the, the bucket is changed out once every minute. Here's the parts brush and the other washer parts that I built just laying in the bottom of the sink. And the sink is de deep enough not to splash water and crud up on the walls and all over the floor. Uh, there's the hose connected to the sink, uh, the, to the faucet running down into the sink. And here's a shoebox sized plastic bin I picked up at Home Depot just to put parts in the wash, you know, with, with a, a Brillo pad or one of those uh, 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 synthetic Brillo pads. Here's some parts I cleaned in the thing. I mean, it works just fabulous. Uh, what more can I say? Now I have a parts washer that I don't need to worry about. I can clean the parts, I can let them soak. And, and uh, there we have it. There you go. Here's my website. I might have this manual published there. Thank you much for your support. Classic manuals.